Good afternoon, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Wednesday, the 19th of October. Taking a look at the tropics today, we have this bean-shaped area of disturbed weather. Uh, actually, this is more of the formation area. The disturbed weather, which I'll show you, is a lot more stretched out and not very healthy looking. But nevertheless, this is the area where the formation and the potential track would be over the next few days. And it does, in fact, look like, uh, I guess, a bean or something like that. Satellite picture, this is what it looks like if you put it into motion. Uh, sort of a upper level low energy in here. Cloudiness and showers stretched out. Overall, the organization is very poor, and you don't need me to tell you that. It's very obvious in the satellite view. Another area of energy out here being sheared. Upper level winds too strong right now. Uh, if this were September, maybe this would have a chance to develop. Uh, if we look at these features at a different perspective, this from the University of Wisconsin Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies site. And this is the 850 millibar relative vorticity product. And basically that's just a fancy way of explaining and showing the spin in the atmosphere, vorticity. And you can imagine when something is stretched out like this, uh, the vorticity is not concentrated around uh, a common center. I mean, even this feature out here, this tropical wave, is more focused, uh, even though it's being sheared, than 99L here. So, you know, it's got a ways to go before it can develop. And if we look at the GFS evolution of it over the next few days, this is the system, and it matches pretty good what the vorticity analysis shows there from that previous image. But over the next few days, it tries to concentrate some of that energy better here north and east of the Bahamas and move its way closer to the southeast U.S. But never fear, the trough's coming. This will bring colder temperatures to the east and catch our system and bring it up to uh, the north and east, absorbing it into the frontal energy itself as more ridging starts to build back in from Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi from there. Watch these heights out over the Atlantic here. They will begin to rise as that ridge comes back strong at the end of the month towards November. In fact, if we go to the last frame, this is five days out, so we're now at October 24th. And look at this. Boy, the ridge comes back. It's like the never-ending summer. It's amazing. So we'll watch what happens with it. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Again, it looks like it'll just move on out, something like this, maybe making it to a weak tropical storm or a subtropical storm. It's basically just different textbook ways of describing uh, the weather system. The impacts are generally the same. Uh, we won't get into that too much. Let's just see what happens first, and then we can go from there. But really no threat to land. This, however, uh, big old typhoon out here, Haima, uh, I think is what it's called, H-A-I-M-A, -A, and it is making landfall and moving across the island of Luzon here in the Philippines, the northernmost area of the Philippines coming out of the Philippine Sea. This is the nighttime visible. I wanted to show you because you can see that the eye disappears as it makes landfall right over that northern tip there. There's a couple of uh, chasers there. James Reynolds and Josh Morgerman. Follow those gentlemen on Twitter for some pretty compelling updates. Josh is getting pressure readings, which is always great to, you know, there's not much meteorological data coming out of some of these regions and he's been chasing this system and reporting on Twitter. He's I Cyclone, uh, the letter I and Cyclone on Twitter and James Reynolds Earth Uncut TV on Twitter. James Reynolds. You'll know him if you look for him on Twitter, believe me. But this uh, typhoon will move across and uh, then eventually towards mainland China. Uh, for reference, this is the southern tip of Taiwan. Then you've got mainland China over here, so this will move across and then head towards that direction over the next few days. This area of the Philippine Sea, as I mentioned yesterday, sort of your typhoon highway, very, very active, and uh, they get pummeled by quite a bit of activity out there, either Taiwan, the Philippines, or heading into mainland China itself. All right, so the MJO, the GFS, very enthusiastic about moving into phases eight, uh, well, out of the null phase, which is kind of where it is now, and then amplifying pretty significantly into phase eight. And that would suggest possible development in the Western Hemisphere, favorable upper-level conditions. However, 
the European is way more conservative here as you can see just maybe touching upon weak amplification into phases eight and one so we'll see how this evolves uh, usually the euro ends up being right as you know by now uh, so we'll see you know maybe the GFS will will get it right one of these days if that amplification were to happen right there that would set up a pretty favorable environment especially in the Western Caribbean so we'll see what happens one topic I wanted to bring up the La Nina uh, or almost La Nina I read the October 13th update from the International Research Institute at Climate Prediction Center at Columbia University and uh, they had a um, uh, update on the ENSO and Nino Southern Oscillation state you have the State of the Union right for states and countries etc and so you have the state of the ENSO the El Nino Southern Oscillation what is it doing well this is a great snapshot here of uh, sort of a slice to the equatorial Pacific centered on October the 10th is the last frame and all this blue is cold anomaly water I mean, it's, it's below the average here on the left side of the scale and there's some positive anomalies showing up this is way down deep and I don't know if I believe this we'll see but this is a pretty good chunk two-thirds or more of the Pacific and down to a depth of more than hundred and fifty meters deep uh, pretty cold relative to average and this is amplified and solidified a little bit more in recent weeks so if you look at the forecasts from all of that data the probabilistic ENSO forecast over the next several months La Nina chances start to dwindle you know maybe weak La Nina conditions and really favoring more of a neutral pattern as we get into the spring and early summer of 2017 but I gotta caution you these areas out here in time is notoriously infamously hard to predict um, it's possible I'm just saying just based on history you know that we could look at this in six months and we have this red way up here and oh man a big El Nino is coming or whatever I mean you just never know um, however the way things look now especially at this large area of cold water and we don't see any huge areas of you know deep oranges and reds gathering over here like we saw uh, a couple of years ago you know where it just starts to grow and grow and then expand east nevertheless we'll see what happens here this will shape next year's forecast for the hurricane season for sure and then if we look at the sort of the spaghetti plot the different plumes as they're called all kinds of models from the NASA the JMA and then you have the very reliable ECMWF right there where is that in this mishmash of stuff I picked it out and it's right in here it only goes out to about January February March and it still stays in the neutral range and the overall consensus of the models right on top of each other from the statistical and the dynamical models you see the statistical the dynamical averages and the CPC climate prediction center consensus pretty much everything right on top of each other uh, which is good you don't want a lot of spread you know that you want to be able to depend on this so the consensus indicating still cold neutral conditions so no strong La Nina's like this and no strong El Nino's like that yeah it'll be interesting and then you know next six weeks or so we can start legitimately looking at these bigger puzzle pieces uh, to see what might shape the 27 hurricane 2017 hurricane season left out a zero there or something or a one but you get the idea it's you know the, the off season is six months and it's gonna go by fast especially considering we had activity into October this year people are still recovering we're still watching and there may be another development you know you never know in the Western Caribbean before all, all is said and done and that six months is gonna go by quickly and in that six months we're gonna have nor'easters blizzards to keep up with and all kinds of interesting things over the uh, East Coast probably because of the very warm Atlantic and the warm Gulf of Mexico that energy goes away over time but it's not instant so we're, we're gonna have a lot to do that's for sure and then boom it'll be June 1st again 2017 all right well that's it for me for today again nothing major to worry about in the Atlantic Basin hopefully our friends in the Philippines will 
get through the night and uh, that typhoon will move on and hopefully it doesn't cause too much additional damage over in mainland China. But we'll take a look at that tomorrow. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. As always, a thank you for uh, tuning in and listening to what I have to say. Hopefully you learned something from it. And with that being said, I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.